You can't fire your players. You got salary cap consequences, right? You could maybe trade a malcontent like they did last year with Chase Claypool. Sorry, Bears. But there isn't much you can do to change your team. And I don't know what practice attire means. Maybe he meant attitude or like practice intensity. Oh, well, that's true. But you only have so much you can do. That's true. Practice right. attire. Yeah, pads. Duh. Duh. But th- you can only do it so many times in the season. It's yes. not It's not a, 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 a weapon you can constantly resort to to get your team better. And I assumed he's using maximum padded practices anyway. Like, did he just stop doing padded practices altogether? So I just don't know what can be done because he made it clear. The Texans were more physical than the Steelers. And that, frankly, is worse than losing 30-6. to To have the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers acknowledge that anyone is more physical than the Steelers because that's been their DNA for 50 Mm -hmm. years, Miles. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that certainly, I mean, when you're only you've had three coaches, you know, in years and years and years and eons and eons, I mean, which is unheard of, that's part of what the Steelers DNA is. And we know that, but I, I think maybe one of the things that they might've done last week was back off on some of those heavy, you know, practices because of the situation that they had with travel. Now, I don't necessarily know that, but that's one of those things that could have been a consequence of, you know, the plane stopping in Kansas City and being there and, you know, doing all that and not getting home until whenever they got home. So I I, I think the, the, the Steelers obviously have to put that physical element back in there. And, you know, padded practices is one thing that you can go to and you can say, OK, that's how we're ab- we're definitely going to ratchet up the intensity. But I think, you know, on a larger level, what's interesting to me is that when he was asked about coaching changes, he said not at this juncture and not that's not something we would do. Right. It, it, it wasn't, you know, when Mike Tomlin wants to be definitive, he can be definitive. You know, when he said never say never, but never when the people were kind of trying to connect him to the USC job, that's Mike Tomlin being definitive. When he says not at this juncture, that to me is a signal that like, hey, at some point, if things don't change and if things don't get better, something could happen there. And it's not like, you know, that's going to be some, I don't know, hugely explosive thing where all of a sudden the the offense is going to look different and it's going to be this and it's going to be that. But what I would go back to is the Lions when they kind of made their changes a couple years ago when Anthony Lynn was the offensive coordinator and instead they kind of elevated Ben Johnson to the play calling role and he was kind of sharing that with uh, Dan Campbell and then it became more Ben Johnson as things as time went on. Like that was an in-season change that really did make a difference because Ben Johnson just connected that much better with Jared Goff and with Dan Campbell and what they wanted to do offensively. So it's not completely out of the question for a change to happen that is internal within the coaching staff and for things to get better. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be some magic elixir either. And you're right. Look, I think back to 2012 when the Ravens fired Cam Cameron as -hmm. offensive coordinator in December and gave the job to Jim Caldwell and, oh, by the way, ultimately won the Super Bowl that year. So there are fixes that can be made, and that's a great catch. Not at this juncture. That isn't what Mike Tomlin would say if it's never going to happen. And, oh, by the way, after this week's home game against the Ravens, Steelers have the bye week. What's the best time during a season to make any type of significant change to your procedures? Bye week. When you've got time to kind of regroup and process and come up with what everything is going to be and then roll it out to the players when they're back from their mandatory five-day break, that is is something to watch. Now, if Kenny Pickett can't play this weekend with that bone bruise in his knee and it's Mitch Trubisky, does that save Matt Canada if that's where this thing is heading? Does he get fired or does he just get de-emphasized? It is a strange time because the winds were blowing so fiercely in his direction before that Sunday night game week three against the Raiders. Steelers win, offense looks better, the pressure drops. Then they go down to Houston, can't do anything, and it's all back now. And let me just add this, too. There's this thing going around on social media about the Matt Canada burner account. And we we communicated 
among the PFT writers about this. And I went back through my past emails from people with the Steelers. This whole thing is premised upon the idea that the burner account had contact that looks like with all the asterisks they put in there as they prepare to ask you where they want the verification code to be sent or whatever, it looks like Steelers.com, Matt Canada at Steelers.com. That's not how the Steelers do their emails. It's Steelers.NFL.com. That's the giveaway there, that this thing that, because it's a great story, especially at a time when anybody and everybody that likes the Steelers hates Matt Canada and is looking for something they can grab onto to justify getting this guy the hell out of town. Oh, look, he's so pathetic. He set up a burner account to support himself. It's Steelers.NFL.com. It's not Steelers.com. So that, that blows it out of the water. And I don't like to turn up my nose at a potentially compelling story, but I tend to try to at least reside from time to time within the boundaries of, you know, reality. Miles. From time uh, to yeah. Time. Uh, occasionally you, you do do that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's only one coach I know who had uh, a lot of time to be on Twitter and, you know, they were in the nation's capital. So, you know, I don't think that Matt Canada is having any dust ups on Twitter. I, so back to, the, back to the Steelers, just a little dust up back to the Steelers. Uh, they got the Ravens coming to town and they may not have Kenny Pickett. I mean, this is like, this is how it's going to be for the Steelers. It's going to be red alert, hair on fire, all hands on deck. And they're going to find a way to win. And then they're going to get their ass kicked. And it's going to be red alert, hair on fire, all hands on deck. This <laughs> right. is going to, it's going to all year long. That's what it's going to be. It's yes. like, oh my God, this is until it breaks one way or the other. And maybe, maybe it starts to break because it is the Ravens who know a thing or two about playing the Steelers in Pittsburgh. And it'll be a close, hard-fought game, presumably. I can't imagine under any set of circumstances either of these teams blowing the other out, no matter how, you know, if we're talking queens and rooks and pawns, it doesn't matter. Yes. When it's Ravens Steelers, it's on and you suck it up and you outperform your abilities to match the guy across from you. But they lose this one going into the bye and fall to two and three after they were two and one. And if the offense, regardless of who the quarterback is, if the offense doesn't perform, it's going to be a long two weeks in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. which tells me this week is going to be a long week for the players. Because Mike Tomlin is going to kick their asses to get them ready for this game. They need this game. They need to go into this bye at three and two badly. You know what they really need to do, Mike? They, they've got to get the run game going. And, you know, I, I think that they would need to do that anyway if it were Kenny Pickett. But if it is Mitchell Trubisky back there at quarterback, that means that there needs to be even more of an emphasis on the run game. Right now, they're only averaging 3.6 yards per carry, and they don't have any rushing touchdowns. And I think when you're talking about physicality and wanting to be more physical and all that, that when you get the run game going – you know, when your offensive line is firing off the ball and they're getting their double teams and they're getting up to linebackers and you are able to get five yards, you know, six yards, chunk plays, tenures, that's where the physicality element can really come in there. So that, to me, if I'm the Steelers and, you know, you're practicing in pads and whatever it might be in your practice attire, that's where I think the focus needs to be this week because irrespective of who the quarterback is, the run game has got to get better against this Ravens defense. And yeah, it's going to be difficult to do that, but that's one place where I think the physicality can definitely come into play. And one of the big questions has been the division of labor between Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, and there's been a push for more Jalen Warren. And I know from going to the Brown Steelers game a couple of weeks ago, Warren has more burst. Warren's mm -hmm. got more acceleration. But, he can play. But this may, this may be why Mike Tomlin has, I think, a special affinity for Najee Harris. And I'm looking at the touches from last week. It was 15 for Najee Harris and 14 for Jalen Warren. It has been evened out. But Najee Harris was far more effective. The physicality is what oozes from Najee Harris. He's not gaining grounds with acceleration and burst and speed. He's gaining yardage by hitting you in the mouth and by not going down and fighting and scratching and clawing for every yard he can get. When I see him run for eight yards, I look and I say, boy, there's other running backs out there that would have gotten 20 out of that. But he earns every blade of grass. 
And I think that mentality is what Mike Tomlin is trying to instill in the team this week. So this could be an old school, heavy dose of Najee Harris type of a game with Jalen Warren is more of a, and I'm just guessing here, Jalen Warren is more of a change of pace. Maybe one of the changes they're going to make is we love the physicality of Najee Harris. That's what we need for the entire football team, both sides of the ball. We need them to see this guy going out there and giving everything he has every time he touches the ball because we need everybody else to play that way all the time. Just a wild guess, but it it goes back to the beginning when I didn't know what the hell Mike Tomlin was talking about when he said changing practice attire. If you're going to put on the pads and you're going to go beat each other up this week to get ready for the Ravens, it could be a Najee Harris game on Sunday if the Steelers are going to have a chance to win. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.